Exit 2601, hold short of runway 8 left to Charlie. Tough travel in the east now. Expect delays if these passengers stranded tonight as hundreds of Delta flights are canceled. Many frustrated travelers. This has been unbelievable. Maybe you can relate to this guy. If you've ever had a severely delayed flight, or worse, it was canceled altogether, this has been a long-running problem for U.S. airlines. And unfortunately, it's getting worse. Global air travel has increased eightfold, with 4.3 billion passengers traveling in 2018. Nearly 3 million people fly out of U.S. airports each day. At any given time, over 9,000 planes can be in the air. And as more people take flight, congested skies can make directing traffic a lot harder for air traffic controllers. At its simplest level, their job is to keep separation between the aircraft. There's an issue of the sheer number of controllers in every type of airspace who can handle that traffic. But that also is where the role of technology can come in. There is no question the job of an air traffic controller requires intense focus. Over the last few years, AI and simulation has helped them communicate with pilots more efficiently. But how did we get here? Let me take you back. A mile wide, two miles long, it was world's biggest and aviation's best. Ford Motor Company pioneered the first commercial flight in 1927. Two years later, the first person on the ground to direct planes to keep them from colliding on the runway was a man by the name of Archie League. His method was pretty simple. Using two flags, he'd signal to pilots when they were clear for landing and takeoff. It wasn't until the 1930s that controllers started using things like blackboards and maps to calculate the distance between aircraft, until eventually adopting radar for fighter jets to communicate during World War II. Fast forward to today, tech has ushered in a new age of automation for air traffic control. What studies have shown is that actually having high fidelity simulation to train these controllers where they can run high stakes exercises, they can practice and be trained before they get into the real world. There will be a shift from this old fashioned ground radar technology to ADS-B, satellite-based activity where the plane will connect with the satellite and the controller will see more precisely where that plane is. What does that mean? If you know more precisely where the aircraft are, you can have less separation. Academy ground, runway 28 right, taxi via Alpha. American 2177, taxi into runway 28 right via Alpha. Voice technologies and other simulation tools are being used at airports around the world. The job of an air traffic controller can be stressful and does require a certain aptitude to do it well. But the field is open to, well, just about anyone here in the United States, as long as you're a citizen, under 31 years old, and can pass a few tests. Look out the window. Is he doing what you told him to do? Uh, you I see assume him? it's the smaller one over there. Are we assuming or are we sure? I am assuming, sadly. <laughs> okay, so you um, need to be a controller and be sure. And if there's one thing I learned, there's absolutely zero room for mistakes. Any hesitation in your voice, it's going to ask you to say it again, which is not a bad thing for our purposes because we're trying to teach the proper way and the proper speed to say things to the pilots. And that could have a positive effect on the chronic flight delay epidemic. The better trained your controllers are on some of the new tools and technologies, the more they have the ability to keep separation to the minimum degree and reduce delays.